All right, hi everyone, happy Friday. I'm Carly, this is Denver Zoo's Zoo to You Virtual Safari. We are here at Be a Zookeeper Zone, brought to you by the Goddard School with 23 area locations around Denver. Thank you and hello to all the Goddard School children who are watching today. We appreciate you tuning in and joining us for another virtual safari. Like I said, we're at Be a Zookeeper Zone, so we're gonna get up close and personal with some of our animal ambassadors today. So let's get started. I have two keepers and a couple birds behind me, so let's get started. Put your questions in the comments for our keepers and we'll answer them throughout the live. All right, so today we have Carly, another keeper. And who do you have with you? So this is Vienna and she is a very impressive Eurasian Eagle Owl, which is one of the largest types of owls in the entire world. So Vienna here is pretty awesome. She actually is 25 years Ooh. old. Yes, it's amazing. And she could live to be into her 60s. So she's still got a lot, a lot of time to give to us and be an amazing ambassador for her species and other birds around the world. And she may look kind of familiar to you. They kind of look like great horned owls um, here in North America. These guys are found in Europe and Asia. They're a lot bigger, but they do have those feather tufts on top of their heads, just like great horned owls do but their eyes are orange colored and great horned owls are yellow. So that's one difference. The other is they're very, very different sizes. So she's ginormous. And we also brought another owl for you guys to meet mm -hmm. who is not ginormous. He is very teeny tiny. That's right. Let me tell you about this guy. His name is Louie. And Louie has a lot to say about his life today. Louie is called a burrowing owl. Um, we're definitely going to be talking today about differences between the little owl and Vienna the big owl. Um, Louie is six years old. He came to us from the St. Louis Zoo, so that's why he has the name Louie. He's been with us since he was just about 10 months old. Now he is full grown. We'll talk in a minute about how big that is but he's not gonna get a whole lot bigger than he is right here. And what's super cool is you can see these burrowing owls right here in Colorado. All right, so we're gonna go back over to Carly, who's gonna tell us more about the Eurasian owl. So again, kind of remind us where we can find this bird in the wild and what makes him so special. These guys are found, or these owls are found in Europe and Asia and even kind of down into North Africa. And they are one of the largest owls in the world. They can even take things like a fox or a small deer for food. So they're very, very strong, powerful hunters. And they spend a lot of time sleeping up in nice high trees and rock cliffs during the day and then hunting at night. Something really cool about owls in general is they have silent flight for their hunting. So their feathers, that wasn't an invitation to please show them. <laughs> their flight feathers have ruffled edges. They're serrated. And I don't know if you can get a close enough look on that, but see how this is serrated right here? So when they flap their wings, the air moves through those serrations instead of across a hard edge of a feather and it makes it very quiet. They also have kind of rough surfaces on their feathers so that when they're moving their wings and flying, if they're rubbing together, the friction isn't causing noise either. So they can swoop down on their prey without the prey knowing they are even there. And we have some questions from people who just tuned in. Hello, thank you for joining us for today's Ooh. virtual safari. Yes. A little woohoo there. We are at Be a Zookeeper Zone brought to you by the Goddard School. Thank you very much to all the Goddard School kids who are watching today. So people wanna know what is this guy, what is this eagle, or not eagle, what is this, what is this owl's name? This is, there we go. <laughs> She's nice and comfy now. That was what we call a rouse where they get their feathers all settled nice and comfy so this is vienna vienna is a eurasian eagle owl they are not related to eagles in any specific way they're just big and that's why they have that name eagle owl there's several species of eagle owls um these guys are found in europe asia and north africa and um she is a pretty big mama females are usually larger than males in raptor species like this so 
I don't know if we want to see if people want to guess how much she weighs. Yeah, we love to take some comments. Uh, if you all want to start putting in your guesses for how much Vienna, the Eurasian Eagle Owl, weighs. Also, Louie, he's the very small one that you saw there a couple minutes ago. And we'll get to Louie in a few minutes. So if you have any more questions, um, what is the benefit of the coloring? of Vienna. It's very beautiful. It is very beautiful and you can imagine if she was sitting in a forest or against a rock cliff and some sun was shining through and it was all speckled light that she would blend in perfectly. So this is all for camouflage and these ear tufts are even for camouflage too. So owl's ears are on the side of their head. This is just feathers but it can break up the shape of her head so she blends in a little bit better instead of having a nice round head that would be kind of obvious out there in the wild. And what's really neat about owls is they do have amazing hearing with those ears and their ears are not even. So you can see my ears. There's one here and one here. They're level, right? Mostly. <laughs> so Vienna has an ear that's up higher and then one that's down lower. And with these feathers on her face that make a facial disc, those feathers can send sound to her ears. And because they're offset, she can pinpoint exactly where a tiny sound like a mouse rustling around is coming from and be able to swoop down and grab it, even without seeing it. If it's hiding under some leaves or under a log or something, she can hear it and doesn't have to see it to be able to grab it with her feet. Kristen is wondering what Eurasian eagle owls eat in their diet. What do we feed them here? What do we feed them here? Well, they eat a lot of meat. These guys are not vegetarians. They are straight carnivores. So they eat mice and some chick. And sometimes we give them a quail or some rabbit, mix it up a little bit, but all meat all the time. All right, I'm going to start reading off some of the guesses for weight here. Uh, we have 5 pounds, 35 pounds, 6 pounds, 17, 20 pounds, 30. Someone guessed 200 pounds. Oh, man, I'm strong. <laughs> yeah, remember, this is on Carly's arm, if that gives you any context. Uh, Manny, age 7, guesses 80 pounds. Bonnie says 15. Sean, age 7, says 35. These are some high guesses. We've got anything from 5 to 6 to... 35, 45, well, and then a 200. About four and a half to five pounds. So whoever guessed five is the closest. Four and a half to five pounds. And that's pretty big for a bird, isn't it's it? It's pretty big for a bird. It seems very light for something this size though, right? So first off, this is very fluffy. There's a lot of feather here. I'm not even there now, Ooh. I'm touching her. <laughs> so up to my knuckle is how much fluff she has on her. So feathers, very fluffy, help insulate her, help protect her from weather and sun, but very fluffy and we all know feathers are very lightweight. They also um, have less bones than a mammal this size would have and their bones are hollow to make them light as well. So why would a bird need to be so light Wait. Yeah, if you know the answer to this question, or if you want to make your best hypothesis or educated guess, throw them in the comments about why a bird would need to be so light. Holly asks, she looks really comfortable on your hand. How do you train an owl? It takes a lot of work. So we spend a ton of time working with all of our animal ambassadors, and we do something called operant conditioning with positive reinforcement. So that means we work with giving our animals the things they like the most. So for her, pieces of meat are going to do it for things that we're asking them to do. And we start really small, like, Hey, I'm standing next to you and you're calm. Here's some food from me and work up to doing flights and being on the glove and being around big crowds. And we reinforce all of that behavior with their favorite food. And that way they're more likely to continue to do those behaviors, but they also have the choice to not. So if she didn't want to come out, if she flew away from me a bunch of times in her mew and said, no, thank you, I'm not stepping on your glove, then I'm not gonna chase her around and make her come out here. So we try to make sure that our animals have the choice to participate in everything we're asking. And when they do, they know they're gonna get those rewards, those reinforcements. And sometimes they decide that those reinforcements aren't worth it that day. We and have that's totally fine. We have some pretty brilliant people in the comments. They're saying they need to be that light so they can fly. Exactly. Good job, guys. Everyone. <laughs> you all know you all know a lot more than than we do. Um, let's see. Do owls have long legs? That's a great question, Nikki. Um, she kind of does. 
you can't really see them. She's got some fluffy pants on. <laughs> But sometimes these guys, these owls especially, can even nest on the ground. So they do spend time on the ground, and when they run across the ground, you can see how long their legs are. But um, not like a flamingo or a stork would have. But yeah, her legs are go kind of far up there, because again, all those feathers right here are just fluff. So her legs are going up to about there. That's pretty long for a bird. Yeah. Some people are noticing she's turning her head around. She's pretty engaged and stimulated by the sight of our two llamas, Jorge and Fernando, yeah. who are back there and everything else down here by Be a Zookeeper Zone, brought to you by the Goddard School. So can she do 360? She can't actually do a full 360 because her head would fall off. <laughs> I'm kidding. No, they can't do 360 because they would twist up all those sinews and you have blood vessels running through your neck to your brain, right? But she can twist her head three quarters of the way around. So 270 degrees from front. So she can go all the way till she's looking here. I can't do that. I can only turn my head this way, right? I can go 90 <laughs> degrees either way. She can go all the way so she's looking here. And if she's looking here and then flips her head all the way back to front and then goes that ne extra 90, it looks like she did a full circle with her head but she can't do a full circle. Vienna is getting a lot of compliments on her beautiful orange eyes. Yes, they're quite lovely. And you said those are different from the North American species. So great horned owls look very similar to Eurasian eagle owls, except that they are much smaller. You might think that the owl you saw in your backyard is as big as her. It's not. They're still pretty hefty birds, but they have a lot less, um, they have yellowish eyes instead of orange. They do have those tufts of feathers, which is why they get the name Great Horned Owl. And their coloration is similar with the pattern and everything, but they are a lot smaller. So as we move on to Louie, what can we ask our viewers right now to kind of watch for and listen out for so they can know the differences and why we have big owls and small owls? Well, we can look at what they might eat out in nature. We can look at the differences in their coloration. We can even look at the differences in what equipment Laura and I are using to handle these birds, to kind of think of what differences there are between this giant owl and our little burrowing owl that you're gonna go see next. And a few more questions for Vienna and Carly. Uh, from how far away can they see their prey? That's Kelly's question. That's a great question. So they say that if Vienna is on one side of a football field, one end zone, and there was a newspaper on the other end zone, they say that she could read the newspaper. But do you want to know what I say? That's incredible. Owls can't read. Oh. It's the best dad joke ever. Okay. Yes, their, their vision's about eight times better than ours. So it's very, very, very great. And their eyes are much bigger than ours are compared to their head. So her head is maybe the size of my fist. Again, she has a bunch of feathers on her head that kind of makes it look bigger. So if we had eyes that were the same proportion as her eyes are to her head, our eyes would be the size of tennis balls in our head. Oh, wow. Learning so much, everyone. <laughs> I hope you guys are enjoying these facts. So we're gonna let Carly and Vienna step out and invite Laura and Louie over here into the staged area of be a zookeeper zone and we're going to learn about a little bit about louie right. a little bit about little louie it's time for the <laughs> pint-sized one now yes all right so what we need to do first thing is give him a chance to just settle in um that's maybe one of the biggest differences between our two owls here is big bird maybe doesn't have to worry about so many things in her world then you get the little bird out here, and even though he's a predator and he hunts other animals, he gets really super aware of everything that's going on around him, and he needs to just sit here and look at it and hear it in order to be comfortable. So we are doing that right now. So we know that Vienna can be found in Europe, Asia, and parts of North Africa. Where can Louie be found? Louie can be found right here in Colorado, which is super cool. So these birds love to live in burrows in the ground. That's why they have the name burrowing owls. Sometimes they'll even borrow burrows from other animals like prairie dogs. So they're kind of crafty and they'll sit nearby 
and they'll wait for those prayer, that little prairie dog family to move out of a burrow and then they know it's time to move in. They spend a lot of time in those burrows. They can have their babies in those burrows. They can do some hunting outside of it and then take their meal underground. Now one thing that's really cool about burrowing owls is that they are called diurnal. What diurnal is, is they are very active during the So usually when you think about owl species, you kind of think about them sitting up in trees in the dark of the night. These guys actually do quite a bit of their hunting during the day, although they can do some hunting at night as well. Rachel is very observant. Carly asked you all who are watching to look out for differences in the way we're even handling the two owls. Rachel says, I noticed Laura is not wearing a glove. Are Louie's nails not that sharp? Perfect. We know we Carly was wearing a pretty thick glove. I love that question so much and it's one of the, the most fun things that we can talk about when we get our very different sized owls out here is I don't know how closely you can see his feet but he is a true raptor which means that he has those very strong feet and he has those really specialized talons or those toenails that help him to catch his prey and even though he has such soft, such small feet, he does still use those to catch his prey. And his prey is going to be different than Vienna's, our much larger eagle owl. He's going to eat mostly bugs. He loves to eat things like crickets and beetles. He might sometimes get something like a small mouse that's running around. Um, again, he's gonna use that very good eyesight to find those animals. And then he uses those feet to help him catch those animals. But fortunately for me, because of his small size, I can hold him on my bare hand and know that I'm safe doing so. So Kay wants to know, is the baby owl quiet? First of all, Kay, this is not a baby. He's six years old. He's gonna be seven in July. So he's full grown, he's not a baby. He's not even gonna get any bigger than this. All right, is, but we've heard him kind of vocalizing. He's not super quiet, is he? No, he's not quiet at all. That's actually one of the ways that burrowing can know where their friends are hanging out. So a lot of times if they're in the grasslands right here in Colorado, they may not necessarily be able to see each other through the tall grass, but if they make these sounds to one another, then they know where their neighbors are staying in nearby burrows so that they don't get too close to their neighbors. So Brody, age 11, he wants to know what is it that allows owls to turn their head so drastically? That's an awesome question, Brody. I really like that. So it's a combination. It's very similar to our necks, actually. It's a combination of the muscles and the tendons that we have. They are just built to do this so much more easily than I can do it. And hopefully, Louie's going to show that off right now because we have one of our llamas, Jorge, <laughs> next to him on this side. And so he's definitely turning his head around to see what's going on with this big 350-pound llama. Aubrey, age 12, says owls are her favorite animal. We have a lot of owl fans in here. Good. I love that. I'm glad we were able to answer your question, Rachel. Are there any others for Laura or Louie? Oh, Aiden, age 12, says do, let them, do we let them hunt for their food or do we just give it to them? A little bit of both, but since we do so much training with our animals here at Denver Zoo, we love to set up their environment so that they can do a lot of hunting and catching their food themselves. So we may actually give them certain toys and hide the food inside of the toys. We call that enrichment. It's anything we can give our animals that's just a little bit different than what they get on a daily basis. And that helps them to work their minds and work their bodies to stay nice and healthy. Megan wants to know how many owls we have here at the zoo. Oh boy, I'm doing a very quick count. In our programming alone, we have four. So we have two Eurasian eagle owls. We have our little buddy here, our little burrowing owl, and we have a barn owl. Is that it in the zoo? Pair behind we have a pair of Eurasian eagle owls behind our bird propagation center as well. Hi Kay, the six-year-old Louie, he'll mostly eat bugs, sometimes small mice. Yes. And what else? You know, those are actually his favorite treats. We've tried other diet items to see if he really likes them, and he just really thoroughly enjoys his 
Jenna says this reminds me of the tawny frog mouth. Oh, I love that. Yes. <laughs> Someone knows small. their birds. <laughs> I am so enjoying these comments and questions. Um, they are similar to one another, but they do have quite a few differences, the tawny frog mouths and owls. We have two tawny frog mouths in our programming as well. And then the next bird that's coming out is kind of similar to a tawny frog mouth. Katie's going to talk about that a little bit more also. Yeah, we have just a couple more moments with Louie and Laura here. So if you have any more questions, but we have a really fun surprise coming out our kookaburra, Adelaide. So I'm gonna head over there so we can bring bring Adelaide out. If you've ever been on one of our outreach programs, been on site for a wildlife show or a demonstration, you might have seen or heard Adelaide. Here she is. And I'm just gonna let her talk for a second. That's kind of a sudden, <laughs> she's not done. way of saying we're at Be a Zookeeper Zone brought to you by the Goddard School with 23 Denver area locations. Special shout out to all the Goddard School children who are tuning in with us today. This is Katie. On her arm there is Adelaide. So tell us a little bit about who Adelaide is and what that vocalization was all about. All right so Adelaide is a 16 year old laughing kookaburra and you guys could hear exactly why she's called a laughing kookaburra. This will do a little bit more for you right there. Because part of her call sounds very much like human laughter. Um, so they're a bird that is native to Australia. So when Laura said uh, we have a bird coming out kind of similar to the tawny frog mouth, I think that's what she was talking about was their tawnies and um, kookaburras are native to Australia. And so the um, kookaburra, like Louie the burrowing owl, is a diurnal bird. So unlike most owls, this bird is active during the daytime. And they're also quite social and territorial. So that call that you heard was Adelaide announcing herself as she got here to let everyone know she was here, to let everyone know that I am her tree, and so you can find another tree. Um, but so she just kind of has to announce her territory whenever she goes someplace new. So <laughs> Matthew says that is the uh, animal in every jungle sound effect. You are correct. <laughs> yes, they do come from Australia but you will hear them in any movie with a jungle scene. They will put a kookaburra in there. A lot of people think it sounds like a monkey, but it does have that very jungle vibe to it. And movies have done that for you guys um, to make you think of a jungle when you hear that call. That vocalization is used a lot in those scenes. What is a kookaburra's lifespan? So kookaburras can live 15 to 20 years. So Adelaide is a very mature kookaburra. She just turned 16 last month. Um, and she has been here at the Denver Zoo most of that life. So she was hatched at another zoo, the Brevard Zoo in Florida. And uh, in that first year of her life, she came here to live at Denver Zoo as an animal ambassador. Katie saying her claws don't hurt your hand. Right, so that is one thing we were gonna really talk about today is the um, differences between Adelaide and those two other birds you um, met already. And we can also try to listen for some similarities because there's definitely similarities as well. But one of the main differences is a kookaburra is a carnivorous, or sorry, one of the similarities is they're a carnivorous bird, so they only eat meat. However, they're not considered a raptor because they don't use their feet for hunting is one of, the, one of the defining things about a raptor that people usually talk about. So her feet are made for perching. She can sit up in a tree and hold onto that perch and be very sturdy, but the, she hunts with her beak. She hunt, yeah, it's a very, I'm gonna try to come on her side here. It's a very long beak. Yeah. And then it's got the very pointed part at the end. So she may look um, similar as far as her beak and her body shape because she is a member of the Kingfisher family, which we have Kingfishers right here in Colorado. So they have a similar body um, shape and that similar beak. 
Um, but this is the largest member of the kingfisher family and the only member that doesn't actually fish. <laughs> so living in Australia, she's going to eat different things that are a little bit more prevalent in her habitat, like snakes and lizards and some bugs, um, a lot of small rodents as well. Um, other invertebrates besides insects too, like crustaceans, things like that. So she eats a lot of small animals, but doesn't really fish. Uh, even though she is a member of that kingfisher family. So the way that she hunts that makes her different than the owls that you met is that she's going to sit up in a tree and kind of watch for things down below her. Those little um, snakes, lizards, invertebrates, things like that. She has a really good focus that sometimes she lets me see um, but she can focus on things that as the branches move, her head doesn't move. And once she spots something, she's going to fly down quickly, land right next to it and grab it with her beak. And once she has the food that she has found with, um, grabs it with her beak, she has to swallow it whole because unlike an owl or a hawk, she doesn't have that sharp tearing beak and she doesn't have those sharp talons for holding on to it. So she's going to have to swallow it whole. So in order to do that, she finds a nice hard surface like a branch or a rock and she's going to slam her prey into that hard surface until it is soft and squishy enough to swallow whole. Oh wow. Kids, do not try that with your dinner, please. <laughs> <laughs> Denise wants to know how much the kookaburras weigh. So Adelaide here weighs about 400 grams, which is just under a pound. Just under a pound. So we had Vienna who's huge compared to Adelaide at four and a half to five. There's no use competing with her. No, there really <laughs> is not. So something fun we do sometimes when we want her to kind of make that vocalization for people is we can actually prompt her yeah. if she's willing to. Can you make that sound and then maybe kids at home can try it at home? Yeah, for sure. So I can't roll my R's. So that's not a talent I have ever acquired. However, I can make a sound that's close enough that usually gets her going. So she does respond to a rolling of the R's if you guys want to try that at home. Um, and I think it's just because it sounds enough like a kookaburra call to her that she has to remind you that she's the kookaburra that lives here. So I usually make a sound that sounds more like this. <laughs> She did. There. So if you all at home, parents, kids, you want to try the <laughs> She's laughing at us. She had a little, little more gas left in the tank. Karen wants to know, why does she tilt her head up to make that sound? I think it's just all about projecting. Yep. We just, she's really trying to let everyone know this is her spot. Uh, Tess wants to know, do we have a breeding program or breeding recommendation for Adelaide? We don't for Adelaide as an animal ambassador, but we do have other kookaburras here at the zoo in our avian propagation department. Uh, Breezley wants to know, she's 11, she wants to know how good is Adelaide's eyesight? Adelaide has very good eyesight, so I wouldn't say as good as a hawk or an eagle, um, but it is very good. So good for sitting up in a tree and watching for prey down on the ground. And Miranda wants to know, have you ever been nipped by her beak? If so, does it hurt? Oh, I have. <laughs> um, and it's not sharp like a, the beak of a raptor, like a eagle or an owl or a hawk. Um, but she does have some, she can have force behind it. When it has happened to me, she hasn't had that force behind it. it more of like a warning, like your hand is somewhere where I don't want it. Just move it. Um, and so she's never really like tried to use that force on me but i think it could hurt yes alexandria says she's a little diva <laughs> we we agree christine's wondering where you can see adelaide at the zoo she actually is part of our animal ambassador program so she doesn't live on an exhibit that you'll see walking around but we do pop-up demos throughout the zoo and on our outreach programs you might see her so that's where she lives she lives behind the scenes or you can do an up-close animal encounter behind with our animal ambassador 
yes, of team behind the scenes. Yeah, meet all sorts of our animal ambassadors. That's a really fun program. Um, we do, like I said, we do have some kookaburras in our avian um, propagation department. So sometimes they are on exhibit. I can tell you right now that if you try to make those sounds that we did earlier to them, they don't respond because I've tried lots of times. <laughs> it's just special for Adelaide. Yeah. Um, Rhea, age 11, we have, she wants to know if she's nocturnal. We said she's diurnal. So that means she's like us. She stays up during the day yep. and goes to sleep at night. Victoria's wondering, are um, kookaburras fast birds? Can they fly really fast? Oh, yeah. Once again, I wouldn't say as fast as like a hawk or a falcon that you really are known for their speed, um, but fast enough to catch those critters. So she's got to be pretty quick. All right. Thank you all so much for donating. We're getting so many wonderful donations. This is Katie. She's holding on to Adelaide, the laughing kookaburra. We'll take a few more questions about any of the three birds you've seen today, whether it be Adelaide, our laughing kookaburra, Louie, our burrowing owl, or Vienna, our Eurasian eagle owl. So you can keep putting those in. And if we don't get to it right now, we will respond to it in the comments. So don't worry. Well, Tiffany says it's Zoe's eight eighth birthday today she lives in denver so happy birthday zoe she really loves the zoo and all of our animals so we miss you zoe we hope you're having a happy birthday and we can see adelaide is really tuned in to louie and vienna over there so they are still out and still enjoying some of this beautiful fresh air that we're having today let's see if there are any more questions for everyone oh. Oh yeah, so we're gonna say bye to Adelaide and we're gonna go back over to Laura and Louie. So we were kind of going from biggest to medium size to smallest. Louie is the smallest of the three birds that we have out for you today. The burrowing owl weighs a whopping 150 grams. 150? 150 grams. So that's about the same size as a small orange. About the same weight. And we actually learned that they are so little that when they lay eggs, it's only about the size of a quarter. So if mom's got some quarters in her purse, get it out, check it out. That is about the size of an egg right before a chick hatches out. Wow. So kids, if you can find things that way, you know, the size of an orange, under a pound, four to five, that'll give you an idea of how much each of these birds weigh. And you can kind of try to hold it on your arm and see how it That's feels right. after a while. It's I actually am, quite a workout, I wasn't it? strong though, so, so don't be confused by that. But he is very, very small. So this is Louie, as a reminder. This is Carly and Vienna. My arm is starting to hurt. <laughs> yes, Sometimes Vienna. Sometimes we do the uh, extra support when we're out for a while. Yes, Vienna uh, at four to five pounds, a little heavier to hold on your arm yeah, after a while. Just hold a five pound weight out to the side like this. For it's a great at home it workout. Really is. It really is. <laughs> All right, we're going to finish up here, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in and being with us today. We can't thank you enough for the donations, the comments, the support we're getting. Um, it really means a lot to us how much you all miss Denver Zoo. Just know that we miss you too. So Thanks signing too. off from Be a Zookeeper Zone brought to you by the Goddard School. Thank you so much and we'll see you on Monday. Thanks for <laughs>